There are several political issues brewing, and for some perspective on all of them, we turn to Ed O'Keefe. He is a congressional reporter for The Washington Post and a CBS News contributor. Ed, good morning. Good to see you guys. Let's start first with Roy Moore. There are establishment Republicans have not been a fan of, collectively a fan of Roy Moore for a while now. Is there any recourse at this point to get him off the ballot or out of this? There's race? really not much that Republicans outside of Alabama can do at this point to stop Moore from remaining on the ballot, uh, r remaining a candidate, and, and potentially winning the election. Uh, I mean, at some point, if he were to win, they might be able to try censuring or expelling him once he's seated. But really, beyond that, there's, there's really nothing they can do. It's all in the hands of Alabama Republicans, uh, who have given no indication at this point that they plan to either ask him to step down or, or encourage people to run for somebody or to vote for somebody else. If these allegations continue to hang over him, is he a problem nationally for the party if he's on the ticket? The fact that we're talking about him, yes. we're not talking about tax reform and yeah. all the yeah. other things that Republicans would rather have us talk about, proves that he's a problem. This is why they didn't want him to be the candidate down there to replace Jeff Sessions. They've had other issues with him. Yeah. Uh, you know, the fact that he's been expelled as the Chief Justice of Alabama in the past. Uh, but they just, you know, they, he was not their choice. They dropped him faster than I expected. I mean, the, the story published, and within two hours, they were saying, if this is true, he should be gone. Uh, that's lightning fast for Republicans. Ed, we talk about Roy Moore in the context of the Senate balance of power. Republicans have a two-seat majority. We're looking towards 2018, some big Senate and House races coming up there. There were elections this week. Democrats yep. feel emboldened. How did you read the victories on Tuesday night? What I think it showed is that Democrats, uh, at least at the local, county, and state levels, are figuring out how to talk about mm -hmm. something other than Donald Trump and take advantage of the fact that people are showing up to vote because they don't like Donald Trump. They're right. not making him the central issue. And exit polling in both Virginia and New Jersey suggests that he's not the main factor. Mm -hmm. But you saw candidates across the country talk about the economy, talk about health care, talk about job creation. Democrats have been saying for months, that's what we've got to do. It appears to have worked in Virginia, New Jersey, and legislative races in Georgia and Washington State, mayoral races across the country as well. What's your sense, Ed, of how Republicans are reading these results? They would, uh, if you talk to them, they'd, they'd like you to believe that this was only... Uh, confined to those states? Confined to those states yeah. and confined to areas of those states where Hillary Clinton prevailed. Yeah. But the problem is they lost statewide elections that they had a good shot at winning when, when the campaign began, especially in Virginia. And, uh, and a lot of these Republican candidates were embracing Trump-style tactics, running ads that raised concerns about mm -hmm. undocumented immigrants, uh, running ads that tried to sort of attack and eviscerate the Democratic opponent in ways that Hillary Clinton was last year. But because they're not Donald Trump and they didn't fully embrace Donald Trump, it backfired for them. Also, just the divisiveness was rejected. So they're going to have to rethink a lot of the ways that they run campaigns in these states, in these suburban areas of the country where Democrats made big gains. Ed, <clears throat> Ed, a lot of Republicans think one of the things they must do to hold on to their majority in the Senate and the House is pass, ta pass tax reform. Right. We know that the House and Senate have now unveiled their plans. How close are we to a deal actually getting done? Well, the plan is for the House to pass their version, the Senate to pass their version probably right after Thanksgiving, if not right before. And then to see the two chambers come together quickly, put together an agreement that the president can sign before Christmas. That's very, very fast. Uh, it is. Okay. And remember, they tried to do this with health care over the summer. It failed to move quickly. Uh, it, it, the, the issue for them is if they can't get it done by January, you bleed into an election year, and there's concerns about this just festering too long. The, the goal in the House was to get this done as quickly as possible mm -hmm. so that it didn't sit out there for lobbying organizations and Democrats and other groups to sort of start picking it apart and saying, wait, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to close this loophole, but not that one? And that's part of the problem here. The other issue, of course, is, you know, what extent will corporations get a tax break? When uh, are they getting right. more favorable treatment than individual taxpayers? All those things yet to be sorted out. Whether or not they can do it on that timeline, look, their track record this year has been pretty bad. So It's also a several thousand page piece of legislation that will affect every sector of the U.S. Absolutely. economy. Right. Yeah. A daunting task. Ed O'Keefe, keep telling us the good news, Ed. Great to see you. <laughs>